Hello everybody, welcome back to another video as today we are reviewing the Edmonton Oilers free agency moves as today was absolutely amazing for the Edmonton Oilers as uh, well yesterday uh, we just had a great day. Uh, honestly, we got some amazing players. We got Brett Kulak back on the team. Uh, Jack Campbell is our new starting goalie now for the next five years. We're going to be talking about that. Of course, we've already talked about Evander Kane re-signing as well, so nothing too much to talk about there, just with the two new players in, well, Kulak re-signing and Campbell, and then we got Greg McKaig and Calvin Picard, but there's nothing too big to talk about those guys. But before we jump into the video, I'd like to just say if you are new to the channel, make sure to slap that subscribe button and hit that like button as well. It'll be very much appreciated there, boys. So let's get into this bad boy here with the Edmonton Oilers as uh, we were pretty busy throughout the day. Uh, of course, we had the two signings, plus we were in also on Connor Brown, who unfortunately went off to the Washington Capitals for a second round pick. Now, from what rumors were saying that we're still after some people in free agency, Dylan Strom and Sonny Milano are still two targets for the Edmonton Oilers. So we're going to have to really see. Now, basically with Connor Brown, um, if we were to pick up Connor Brown, it would mean that Jesse Pugliarvi or Connor or, or Warren Fogel might be two guys that might be traded away from the Edmonton Oilers. Is, from what I was hearing, if we picked up Connor Brown, basically there was an out for Jesse Pugliarvi. Um, from what I was hearing. Now, I think what they were trying to do was trying to trade Jesse Pugliarvi for Connor Brown, but Ottawa didn't want any players back. They just wanted a pick uh, for Connor Brown in the deal. So uh, I'm not too sure what was going on there. Uh, I'm glad they didn't want to take Jesse Pugliarvi. I'd rather keep Jesse Pugliarvi, but it really does seem like sooner or later we're most likely going to be training him out the door. So... Let's get into the signings because this is just all speculation and rumors. Now, I would personally love to have Dylan Schomer, Sonny Milano on the team. Both had great years last year. Uh, it would be huge additions to the team. So I'm excited to see what will happen there if we are able to get one of those guys because I think they'd be really good, especially if we could get them for dirt cheap as well. So let's get into the very first guy, uh, the very first signing of the day uh, right after Vander Kane, which was Jack Campbell. Now, there is a lot of stuff to talk about. There really is. Because this guy, there's, there could be a lot of problems with Jack Campbell. Uh, I'll, I'll go into it. The contract is not bad if he pans out. Now, a 5-for-5 five five for Jack Campbell is a big-time risk because Jack Campbell has never been a consistent goaltender yet in his career. Uh, this guy has been up and down. We've seen it this past year where the first 25 games of the season, he was a Vesna winning caliber goalie. He was 17-5-2 and two with a 9.39 save percentage. I mean, the guy was absolutely insane to start off the season. But then the next half of the season where, he, you know, the 24 games, he went 14-4-4, four four, which was still very respectable, but had an 8.88 save percentage. There's a total drastic change in the way that Jack Campbell played from the beginning of the season to halfway through it. And even if you were to look at it as just his base stats and his analytics, you could even see an up and down curve. You know, 1920, he struggled badly. The next year, he did a lot better in 2021 and then had a little bit of a down curve for 2021-22. You know, there's, you know, his even strength is not the most amazing. He doesn't deal good with high danger chances. So there's a, a lot of worry with Jack Campbell, right? This is could be a potential guy that could absolutely just kill it out there. But there's also a lot of chances that he might not be that guy. Um, he played his most games this year, which was 49. And you're probably going to be expecting Jack Campbell to take probably on another uh, 10 to 20 games, potentially. Probably most likely 10 games. You'll probably see him around the 60 game mark. But how well is he going to do with that type of workload? Majority of the time, he's put up really good, you know, 920 save percentages when he's only played 20 to 30 games. So this is a big gamble for the Edmonton Oilers, and I'm going to pull up some stats uh, from the guy named NHL underscore uh, Sid. He writes some articles for Oilers Nation. Amazing writer. I'm a big fan of him. So this is what he kind of says about Jack Campbell. He kind of agrees. He, he, he thinks that the uh, it's a little bit of an overpayment for Jack Campbell, and he goes into this. His raw percentage is solid, but public and uh, uh, proprietary, if I could speak properly, goaltender metrics that account for shot quality aren't exceedingly fond of him. Uh, with that said, he seems like a great person, of course, and uh, goaltender can be unpredictable, which it absolutely is, and I hope he tries here, and I definitely think that as well. 
Campbell ranks 33rd out of the 65 goalies in the past two years and goals saved above expected. Per Kevin Woodley, who has a access to private data that NHL teams use, he still ranks near the 30-39th place per those metrics. So there's a lot of concern with this, right? You look at those metrics, he ranks out of 33rd out of, you know, the 65 goalies out of the league. So that means he's not even really, he's kind of like a backup, you know, he's, he's in that 33rd spot, just kind of stepping into like maybe a starting role for a team. And of course he is that going to be that starting goalie without a doubt. And I have that belief that maybe Jack Campbell could be that guy. I mean, you look at Jacob Markstrom, there was a lot of inconsistencies with Jacob Markstrom coming into, you know, joining with the Calgary Flames too. And he's solidified that spot as well. Now, they're, we're taking a big gamble with this one. You know, five for five is a big gamble because if Jack Campbell doesn't work off right off the get-go, then, you know, we're having to stay and paying him $5 million per year. And, you know, we're probably not going to be able to get another goalie unless Stuart Skinner or one of our younger guys really blow up. But I feel like Jack Campbell is going to be that guy. You know, I watched him a little bit last year. When he was good, he was really good. And if he's able to fix those inconsistency problems, then we can have a really solid goalie in front of us. And I'm really excited to see that. You know, even during the playoffs, he wasn't that bad. He bounced back a little bit. 897 save percentage wasn't terrible. Definitely wasn't amazing against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Neither was the Leafs either. So I'm excited to see what Jack Campbell will do for the Edmonton Oilers. And thank you, Leafs, once again for another player. And thank you guys for being our farm team. I, I just got to throw that one out there because apparently the Leafs and Oilers are still bickering at each other to this day. Um, and, and we're still fighting about the fact that we're, we're stealing all the Leafs players, which I understand. I, I understand a little bit. But now we get on to the most amazing move. Now, before I go off on the Campbell move, I love the deal. Um, a little bit of an overpayment could have been a year less for the term, but honestly, that's what you're going to get for Jack Campbell at 5 mil. At least we're not having to pay him 5.5 or anything like that. I'm not a hate. I'm not hating that deal at all. I really enjoy it. Uh, I, I think uh, I have a lot of hope for Jack Campbell. I think he's going to be an amazing goalie and I hope for the best for him. And I hope he's absolutely amazing for us. Uh, but moving forward, let's get on to the next guy, Brett Kulak. And wow, what a deal this was. Four years at $2.75 million for the Edmonton Oilers. And this is an amazing pickup for the Edmonton Oilers. Now, I thought we weren't going to be able to get this guy back on the team. Reason being, uh, there was a ton of teams on Brett Kulak. I thought the market was going to raise up for him, especially with Ben Sherrod and Erica Branson getting the $4 million. They definitely did not deserve. And, and those deals were fucking crazy. I cannot believe those guys got that amount of money. So I was like thinking, okay, now Brett Kulak is probably going to be getting near that amount. You know, he's a really good defenseman. He's probably he's better than I think both Shara and Gabranson. And we got him at $2.75 million for the next four years, which is absolutely incredible. That's exactly what you want for a guy that could be, you know, your top four defenseman and can play alongside of either Evan Bouchard or Tyson Berry. And he played amazing alongside of Tyson Berry. So imagining what he could do alongside of Evan Bouchard instead of having fucking Duncan Keith there. I think this is an amazing move. Uh, amazing bargain, uh, and I thought he was going to go somewhere else, so it was an absolute surprising to see him come back at that term. That deal was just absolutely amazing. Amazing defensive player, amazing analytics, and I think he'll be an amazing player uh, for the next few years, and amazing bargain deal for Ken Holland. Uh, and then we got Greg McKay, who is just a guy that does not do very much out there, five-on-five-wise, five but is a great PK guy, and then we just get the, the third-string goalie in Calvin Picard. So, that leaves us overall with $7.6 million in our cap space. Still the deal with Ryan McLeod, Kelly Yamato, and Jesse Pugliarvi. And also looking at signing either Dylan Strom uh, or Sonny Milano. So, we're going to have to really see what the Edmonton Oilers really do right now. Because, you know, there's going to be some, you know, big questions. We still have that whole right wing side still to fill up. And also Ryan McLeod to add into the situation and Kelly Yamato. So, we're going to have to see what Ken Holland does. Uh, I'm liking what the team is looking like so far already with Brett Kulak and uh, um, Campbell and uh, Kane already added to the team. We get the soup and stew uh, in the back end for our goaltending. So honestly, the team is shaping up. It's looking good. I am excited uh, for what the Edmonton Oilers will do in the next year and for the rest of free agency. Uh, but tell me guys what you guys thought in the comment section down below of uh, this past free agency because honestly... 
Um, I really loved it. I thought Holland did an amazing job. Uh, he got some amazing deals for a lot of great players. He didn't overpay anyone. It wasn't crazy deals, and I really enjoyed what Kenny did. So uh, make sure to hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button as well. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Adios, amigos.